Hello and welcome to the Acupuncture Storytime Podcast. My name is Daniel Rose and I will be your host for telling stories about successful cases in the acupuncture and Chinese herbal medicine clinic. Why do we need a podcast about this? Short answer, this is the podcast that I wish existed for me already when I was looking at Spotify and typing in acupuncture podcast and Chinese medicine podcast. There's a lot of good stuff people have already produced, but I wanted something where people are just sharing their clinical experience, stuff that worked in their clinic and why it worked and how it worked so I could learn from it. I'm always on the hunt, personally, as a Chinese medicine practitioner, I'm always on the hunt for new books, for new classes, for new teachers, for perspectives to learn in Chinese medicine. And since I didn't find something that delivered it in a snappy, entertaining way, and only in fantastic, long-form conversations, typically, already as a podcast, I thought I would make something that would be shorter, like the potato chip of Chinese medicine, where you just, like, grab a bag and just, like, eat it, eat Chinese medicine knowledge, if that makes any sense. So, if you're a student or practitioner of Chinese medicine, you're listening to this, I hope it will be be helpful to you and entertaining as well because uh, that's why it's story time and not case study time because case studies tend to be dry and boring it's more fun and being told in the way of an anecdote and i hope it's so i hope this could be helpful to you if you are somebody who is a layman who's interested or considering acupuncture chinese or rural medicine for your particular medical conditions who are just interested i hope that this is accessible accessible and interesting to you as well, though at some points it may get technical. And this is the first podcast, so I haven't really decided how much technical language to use or how much explaining to do, but we're just going to try and feel it out. So without further ado, here is the first case study. It's from about seven years ago and um, something that always stuck with me. So there was a woman who walked into the office. She was tall. She was well-dressed. She was extremely confident, and she was a naturopathic doctor, and she also had a lot of red acne on her face. So I took her back to the room where I ask people about them, what were the treatment room, and I said, what can I help you with? And she said, it's so embarrassing to me that I have all this acne because I'm a very respected naturopathic doctor, and I help so many people with their diseases, but I can't get these pimples off my face, no matter what I do. And it's embarrassing for me to see clients like this. And I asked, well, what have you done to try and treat it? And she said, I do so much. I've been doing so many cleanses and cleansing diets. I'm on a raw vegan diet, and I have done so many juice fasts, and I've taken so many kind of like herbal cleansing medicines and I even went to a dermatologist and I got creams and it still didn't go away and so now I'm I'm coming here because one of my patients said that you were able to help them with something and uh, right away that makes alarm bells for me as a Chinese medicine practitioner uh, because as a Chinese medicine practitioner you know the first thing I look at in a patient is, is their condition what we call an excess condition or a deficiency condition? An excess condition for this acne, for example, would be an acne that's caused by something that there's like a toxin that there's too much of that has to be cleansed or like a bacteria in the face or something or caused by uh, a blockage like there's a, a blockage in the blood vessels that's not letting blood move freely in the face or there's too much thick sticky stuff uh, what we call dampness in chinese medicine that's blocking the face that would be acne from an excess condition and these things have to be drained and cleared you can also have deficiency conditions where the illness in a patient is coming from there's too much weakness there's not enough power in the body not enough strength in one of the organ systems to make things function and in that case you don't have to drain you, you need to strengthen and nourish and build up the strength of the body to heal the condition. So typically, in most cases of acne, it's an excess condition. You need to drain toxins. You need to drain dampness if it's pussy and oozy. You need to move blood and fix blood stagnation problems. And that's how we approach acne. But this case was different. 
because this woman was doing a ton and ton of stuff to drain out toxins, to get rid of any blockages, any excess conditions, and the acne is getting worse and worse. So my first question for her on this treatment regimen is, are you really cold all the time? And she's like, yes, how did you know? I said, it's probably because you have a lot of juice out of the fridge that's really cold all the time. And also juice has a cooling, fresh juices, fruit and vegetable juices have a cooling effect on the body. And also you eat a raw vegan diet that is also not warm and cooked food. And that's going to make you cold and it's going to make you tired because it's cleansing diet. It's not like a nourishing diet. You also need to incorporate some warm cooked foods into your diet. And she's like, what are you talking about? My raw vegan diet has the most life force in it possible because it has been unprocessed and untouched and is raw and natural. To which I said, I don't think that's true because the way digestion works is the stomach has to be warm in order for the process of digestion to happen. It takes place around 100 degrees. The colder it gets, the slower the enzymes in the stomach move, if you remember your anatomy and physiology courses. And also, the stomach needs to break the food into a, a mush before that process of digestion and getting all those nutrients can begin. So if the food is cold in your stomach, then it's harder to break into a mush. You see, the refrigerator preserve things, preserves things and stops it from breaking into a mush. And also, all those foods are have a cooling effect on the body and also they when you have raw foods they're typically harder to digest than cool foods or than cooked foods because cooked foods are kind of pre-digested when you cook them they get softer and easier to break down so even though you're losing nutrients and if you want to say you're losing the natural life force of the energy or whatever you're making it more bioavailable that you can get the energy from the food so even though you're eating this diet that's healthy it's actually really not good for you. She's just like, huh. And at this point, we have a question, which is we look at her face. It looks like, you know, heat. I'm telling her she's cold and she's feeling cold and her pulse feels like a cold person's pulse, but her face has this heat in it, this heat, this red, hot, angry acne. So the question is, what's causing her to have red hot angry acne that's getting worse the more cooling cleansing stuff she puts into her body so to answer that question we have to revisit a case from probably like about 10 years ago when i was an acupuncture student and i was a student in bastyr university in seattle washington with a supervisor named hong yu and anybody who was at bastyr in the 2010s knows that hong yu was amazing. She was like a mystic. She would feel a person's pulse and then tell them everything about themselves, even stuff that they didn't know. And she would say st stuff in the clinic like, if you want to truly understand me, when I speak, my chi has to be strong enough to go through all the faces that are between us. And if I want to understand you, your chi has to be strong enough to penetrate all of the faces that are between you and me. And I thought about that for years, but that's a thought for a different guide. Point is, Hong Yu was great. Any day in the clinic with her, you really learned a lot. So on this particular day, in walked a man, he was about 5'10", sandy blonde hair, wearing bike shorts in January with a flushed red sweaty head because he had just biked to the clinic. And he was coming for back pain. And as students, we were just like, oh, okay, um, back pain. So probably just do some points on the back, like urinary bladder 23, 25, 27. Maybe we'll do UB40 because that's the influential point of the back, says the textbook. It may be kidney 3 because if you nourish kidneys, that's also going to help. And yeah, we'll help his back. Hooray. So we went back to the discussion room to tell this brilliant plan to Hong Yu. And she said, but what about his pulse? What about his pulse? It was kind of weak. She said, it was a winter pulse. What does that mean? Well, that means he's really cold. And did you notice 
he's wearing shorts and it's January. And when I asked him, he says he wears shorts every single winter. Oh yeah, wow. What does that mean on you? It means that he has something twisted in his mind, that he thinks he has to show off his legs to everyone. And because of this, in the wintertime, the cold enters into the channels of his legs and is lodged there. And if you're not a Chinese medicine person, just bear with me because this is how Chinese medicine works, but it really works and it worked with this patient and uh, it's just a different system of logic. Uh, so just trust the system and, and go with it. So I said, oh, okay. So he's got internal cold. <laughs> Great. And she said, but did you notice that he's sweating a lot and flushed and red in his face? And we're just like, oh, yeah. How about that? How does that make any sense? And she explained, well, in nature, heat rises and cold sinks. So in this person's body, cold has lodged into his legs from wearing shorts every winter over many years. And his body is producing heat in the center, in the core, to try and drive the cold out of the legs. But that heat is not strong enough. And then the heat arises and makes his face flushed and red and hot, whereas his bottom half is cold to the touch. And that disharmony between yin and yang, that the yin, the cold part, is all going to the bottom, and the hot part is going up to the top, is what's causing the back pain in the middle. And we're just like... Oh my gosh, that's so interesting, Hong Yu. What do we do? She said, well, we have to warm him up. So let's do a bunch of moxibustion where we do a treatment heating up his back and heating up his core, and that should do the trick. And sure enough, I think we had three or four visits like once a week where we just did a ton of moxa on him, and the guy, his back got better, his face was less flushed, he was much more comfortable, but he would not... Listen, no matter how much Hong Yu told him to wear pants the winter time, which just proves that there was something twisted in his mind, just like she said earlier. So anyway, that story is very relevant to our case because I was thinking of that and I said, oh, sounds like a case just like that where this naturopathic doctor has a ton of cold from all of these juices and all of these smoothies and all of this raw vegan food that she's eating. And that cold, her body's trying to produce heat because she has a strong constitution naturally uh, to fight it off. But the heat's not strong enough and it rises to the head and it makes this acne. And that's why the more that she cleanses and the more she does cooling treatments, the worse it's getting. So I explained this to her and she said, okay, it's worth a try. And to her credit, she completely swapped her diet I told her only warm cooked food allowed and I also want you to add in chicken soup and like beef broth and warm animal proteins that are easily digestible and she did it and we put her on herbs was the main treatment for this futsi li zhang wan so futsi li zhang wan is a herbal formula that is called warm the middle medicine warm the middle decoction and it has aconite in it, which gives it a pretty strong kick. See, this is the part in the podcast, by the way, just parenthetically, where I'm not sure whether I'm talking to practitioners or potential patients. I haven't really made that decision, so I'm just kind of waffling and making it a little awkward for everyone. But just bear with me, because we're going to figure this out. But anyway, so I prescribed this medication that is supposed to strengthen her digestive system so that she's able to absorb nutrients better because her stomach has been damaged from this diet that she's had and it's not absorbing the nutrients no matter how much she's putting into her and to warm up the whole body very strong. I think I used something like 15 grams Dongshan, 10 grams Baiju, 6 grams Jargon Cao, 10 grams Ganjiang, 10 grams Futsa. Just had her cook the whole thing for an hour. I didn't ever pre-cook the Futsa or anything. And I gave her seven bags of that. And she came back and she was like really warmed up. And the acne was looking a little better. And she said, well, I'm warm now. But now what's going on is I'm super stressed out. And her pulse was really wiry, which means it feels like a guitar string under your fingers. And that means she's really stressed. Um, so I said, okay, well, let's just switch, switch you to some herbs for stress management and see what that does. And I just put her on Xiaoyasan, just basic formula for stress 
And so, so far, I'm not really doing anything to directly address the acne. Uh, but I put her on that for something like five days. And I also did acupuncture at both of these visits that were spaced like a week apart. And the acupuncture, I used si ma, these points on the thigh, on the stomach channel from Master Dong treatment, uh, Master Dong's lineage of acupuncture. And I used, back in my notes for this, stomach 36, LI4, liver 3, large intestine 11. That's the basics of the acupuncture treatment. Oh, yeah, and a lot of moxa to the middle and to stomach 36, like REN4, REN12, stomach 36, bunch of moxa. How could I forget that? Anyway, so after those two treatments, a week of Futsa Li Zhang Wan and a week of Xiao Sun, the acne was looking even better, but she was like, I'm cold again. So I stuck her back on Futsa Li Zhang Wan, and we kind of just alternated for a month between. Futsu Li Zhangwan and Xiao Yao San doing the same acupuncture and moxa treatment. And pretty quick results for a dermatology case. Usually they're slower. In about a month, we cleared out all of the acne from her face. And that was a really special case. Um, amazing how Chinese medical theory worked there and made everything make sense. And that's why I'm in this business because sometimes that perspective of Chinese medicine can really help with these weird, difficult cases that don't respond to your alternative treatments like going on a crazy raw vegan diet or your standard dermatologic steroid and bacitracin treatment, whatever it is. So there's the case. If you have followed all the way to the end of this story, which is probably too long, I think I need to try and cut it down in the future, then thank you for listening. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Please feel free to reach out to me on uh, via email or social media. I'll put those things in the show notes. And I feel like we should come up with some catchy tagline to end it. Like, I hope you had a great story. But you have something better than that. So we're going to work on it. And uh, if you have a suggestion for that as well, um, please let me know. Have a great day.